You don't believe in the boogeyman? You should. The saga of Michael Myers and Laurie Strode isn't over. In 2019, Universal and Blumhouse Studios made an announcement. Halloween kills and Halloween ends. Halloween kills. Um, Halloween kills, Halloween ends. Halloween kills and Halloween ends. Halloween kills. Will indeed star Jamie Lee Curtis returning to the role of Laurie Strode. Yes, we have a David Gordon Green helmed Halloween trilogy. Later, each remaining installment would be pushed back by one year due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Much like the original Halloween 2 from 1981, Halloween Kills picks up right where the previous entry in the series left off. We find a wounded Lori Strode being rushed to the hospital with her family by her side. As they and the rest of the town of Haddonfield react to the previous installment's bloody events and how they deal with the continuing threat of Michael Myers. 2018's Halloween was a huge hit, making $77 million at the domestic box office opening weekend, the highest in the franchise's history. So it's no wonder the studio tapped Green to continue the story. While 2018 was truly a reintroduction to the franchise, slowly dipping our toes back into the world of Haddonfield, Halloween Kills starts right off the bat with, you guessed it, trauma. <laughs> what does trauma really look like? This is what trauma looks like. Family trauma. Generational trauma. Generational trauma. Family trauma. You know, generational trauma. Generational trauma. Generational trauma. Yeah. Trauma. Trauma. Kills immediately makes you aware of its enhanced brutality. Michael is pissed, and his rage and the rage of the people of Haddonfield drive the film, for better or worse. Evil dies tonight! Evil dies tonight! Alright, everybody! <laughs> Opening weekend, I was pretty satisfied after coming out of the film. Seeing it during the Halloween season with my friends and a reactive audience made it that much more fun. Michael's knife work is on full display, giving us some great practical effects and stunt work with the kills. <laughs> His mask has almost never looked better. It's got this burned and charred look, and I love how it acts as this physical tracker of just what the shape has been through in all of his so-called adventures. For a franchise with a checkered history on getting the look right for their main big bad, it's really awesome to see them do such a good job now. As for the Laurie Strode side of things, Jamie Lee is giving her all in what is now her sixth Halloween film. Sadly, also like the original Halloween 2, Lori is stuck in the hospital for the whole duration. The writers kind of wrote themselves in a corner with the wounds she received in the last film, but you can tell Jamie Lee cares about this character and wants to do her justice. Let him come for me. As the weeks passed after seeing the film, I did notice some things I didn't love so much. While I really enjoyed getting back legacy characters like Lindsay and Tommy, I didn't love that the whole mob rules mentality became non-believable during the movie, and it kind of took over the story. Evil dies tonight! I do think that Green had some interesting things to say about collective trauma and how groups of people react when they're afraid. I just think it should have been a smaller portion of the film and have us focus on individual storylines more. I mean, going into the film, I thought we'd get a lot more of Lori's granddaughter, Allison. Hopefully we'll get more of her in Halloween Ends. Do it! Do it! Do it! There are a couple of new characters sprinkled in here that I really love, like the couple that we saw for a second in 2018, and now we see them again at the bar. They reached such a bloody demise, but I really loved their screen time. 
Also, as a Real Housewives junkie, I have to admit I love seeing Kyle Richards return to her role as Lindsay, which she had not played since the 1978 original. Her scene of running away from Michael in the park is probably my favorite scene in the film. We also meet a gay couple living in the Myers house. And while I really appreciate them trying to be more inclusive, I don't know if I necessarily appreciate the outcome. It's pretty harmless, but it would mean a lot more to me personally if they actually had queer actors in the roles. So I have some great and not so great thoughts on the film, as does the majority of the Halloween fan base. Here to talk to me and share their opinions is fellow YouTuber Tristan. We are joined again by my friend Tristan of Tristan Collects on YouTube, and they are also Paranoid Ghost 85 on Instagram. Hello, Dylan. So last time I talked to you like this, um, it was a week before Halloween Kills came out, and we were discussing um, Halloween 2018, and I would love to hear your first impressions of what you thought about Halloween Kills. Well, my first impressions were that um, it was kind of a mixed bag. Uh, there were things that I liked about it, things that I didn't. Uh, most of those things are still the same after repeat viewings. Some of the good things that I can say about it are the cinematography. I think the movie looks really beautiful, uh, beautifully shot. Um, another thing is the mask. I think the Myers mask looks amazing, uh, just like it did in Halloween 2018. I think Christopher Nelson, who is responsible for the masks in, the, in this trilogy, is doing an amazing job on all of them. Another positive thing that I can say is absolutely the score. Um, anything that John Carpenter does musically, I love. So you can't really fault the score. I also really, really like the queer representation in this one. Um, the characters of Big John and Little John. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I don't think that we have ever had a queer representation in the Halloween series. And I think their relationship was really cute. And I don't think it you know, played into too many stereotypes. I really appreciated that. Another good thing was uh, the effects, uh, particularly the makeup effects. I loved all of those. And I love how they're, you know, keeping things mostly practical. That's always a good thing in horror movies. How did you like the depiction of Michael in this movie as far as, you know, a man versus supernatural where they kind of, um, they definitely seem to up the ante a little bit as far as the kills and his brutality compared to 2018. So I just wanted to get what you thought about how they depicted Michael in this one. You know, they're going to have to explain something at some point uh, with Michael uh, because he's just gone through so much. Um, there's no way that he can be human. And I know this was called Halloween Kills, but the brutality really reminded me a little bit of the Rob Zombie Halloween mm. film of where those went. A big part of this movie was um, Haddonfield, a lot of legacy characters coming back, and the idea of mob rules, mob uh, mentality, and of course, the famous line, evil dies tonight. So yes. what, what did you think about that whole portion and theme of the film? Um, you know, I think the whole mob mentality thing was a bit overdone in the film. I think there was a bit too much of it. Um, just to compare a mob mentality scenario, I think it was handled a lot better in Halloween 4. I think the whole evil dies tonight thing, it was, a, it was overdone. Uh, mm -hmm. I think if, if one were try, trying to uh, play a drinking game, with, uh, uh, they would probably be on the floor in about 20 minutes. You know, I think my favorite scene was the opening sequence um, had, had in Haddonfield, Halloween 1978. They did a really great job of making it seem like it was 1978 to me. I really felt it. That mask in the Halloween 78 flashbacks was just amazing. This will be a tough one because it's conspiracies out there are everywhere. Where do you think this franchise is going? We had a kind of a cliffhanger ending there and Halloween Kills comes out in a couple of weeks. Where do you think they're taking us? I think they're gonna mention a little bit more about Michael's backstory. And I think they're gonna give us a little bit of, you know, why he can do what he does and why he can still be alive and, and all of that and why he's so superhuman. That they're probably going to kill off Laurie Strode I mean, it's it's pretty much over for yeah. Jamie Lee Curtis at this point. I bet I don't Jamie Lee Curtis has that in her contract. <laughs> Probably. 
Thank you. You will, you enjoy Halloween ends. Thank you so much for taking the time tonight. Awesome, Tristan. Have a good one. And I'll talk to you soon. You too. Talk to you soon. Ray? Oh. <laughs> He's dead, Mom. So we have another fun, beautifully shot romp with one of horror's reigning icons. Never a bad thing. I do just wish they were able to keep these new films a bit more small and simple and really focus on creating a suspenseful atmosphere the audience can envelop themselves in, like the 1978 classic. So we have a thrilling horror slash drama full of trauma, and I get why they're going that route for modern audiences. By the end of the film, it gets harder to tell if Michael is still just a man, or is he transcending into something else? At this point, I won't mind an all-powerful Michael. Just have a good plan. Seems like everybody wants a trilogy these days, but they don't want to plan all three out so it makes a coherent story. I'm perfectly willing to admit that this story best served should have ended in 1978, and this franchise should just be dead and buried. But just like Michael, if it stayed gone, we'd miss all the fun.